Hello and welcome to today's social studies lesson. So first of all guys, can we all turn to wave and say a big hello to our friends on camera. Hello. And we'll begin by doing our meditation sequence. So I will sit down, take two fingers, find our heart center, left hand on our laps and close our eyes. When you're ready, guys, you can open your eyes and come back to the room. And next, we'll do our stretch sequence. So let's stand up and push in our chairs. And we can begin by stretching up high to the sky. High as we can. And then let's go down low. Touch your toes. Go up high one more time. And this time, can we go tippy toe high? And while we're there, let's have a wave side to side. Excellent, guys. And then back down to touch your toes again. Stand up and shake it out. Arms and legs, shake it out. Shake it out. And then hands on hips, have a wiggle side to side. Wiggle side to side. Stop. Another wiggle side to side. Stop, forwards, backwards, forwards, backwards, forwards, backwards, and stop. And now we can go round and round, round and round, round and round, and stop. Now we can go back the other way. Give our spines a nice stretch the other way. Excellent, guys. And then to finish, we'll do another shake. Arms and legs, shake it out. And to finish, five claps. One, two, three, four, five. Excellent, guys. Have a seat. So welcome to today's social studies lesson. And to begin, we're going to do a recap exercise of what we learned in the previous lesson. Now, in the previous lesson, we learned about types of things that occur in the world naturally. 
Can anybody remember? Natural resources, excellent down. We learned about natural resources. So let's write that phrase on the board first. Natural, N A T U R A L. And resources are E S O U R C E S. So all together, guys, natural resources. And we learnt about different types of natural resources. So if anybody can remember any, raise your hand and let me know what ones you can remember. Prel. Water. Excellent. Water is a very important type of natural resource. Something we need every day. So we can write water. W. A. T. E. R. But there were other types down. Animals, yes. Remember the animals that help us to get our food and even some items of clothing. So animals, A N I M A L S. Black cow. Trees, yes. Trees and plants, a natural resource that helps the world in many different ways. So we can go with trees and plants. Packung. Minerals, yes. Minerals are the different types of things that we find inside the earth, such as rocks, stones, and sometimes even precious metals, like gold and diamonds. So minerals. Then finally, there is one thing that we do all the time, Nadia. Air. Yes, air. Do we need air? Is air important to us? What would happen? What would happen if for one minute we had no air? We would, yes, we can't breathe. We need air all the time. A, I, R. So all together, guys, we've got water, animals, trees and plants, minerals, and air. Now, who can give me some examples of what types of natural resources? Who can give me an example of a water source? Ocean. Yes, ocean is a very big water source. Any other examples of water? The sea. the sea, yes. How about near where we are at our school? Pond or r r river. river. So you see the different water sources that we have that are all natural resources. Now how about animals that give us food? Cats don't give us food. Think about the ones that give us, tigers don't give us food. Do you eat snake? Pig, okay, we get food from pig. Pakbung. Fish, yes, we get food from fish. Chicken, chicken. Any other animals that we get food from? So we eat pig, we eat pork. Fish, chicken gives us eggs and chicken meat. Anything else? What about milk? Where does milk come from? Cow. Cow. You see, we get all our dairy products, milk, cheese, butter, comes from cows. And these are examples of natural resources as animals. Now, trees and plants are fairly self-explanatory. They're trees and plants. But we can also add... Flowers and soil to the list. These are all things that grow naturally out the ground. First of all, we need the soil, then the flowers, then plants, and then trees. Now, thinking about minerals, Bank One, can you think of any minerals that come out of the, the ground? Any types of rocks or stones? Rocks, okay, so we've got rocks, 
R O C K S. Minerals are things that can be found inside the earth, including precious metals. So, gold. And if we're really lucky, we might even find diamonds. Very expensive. If we find the diamonds, we're very lucky. Again. And silver too, yes. Yeah. Silver is another type of precious metal, just like gold. And they are all examples of minerals. And finally, we have air. Now, air is what we need to breathe and is a very important natural resource. So let's practice speaking them all together one more time, guys. Water, Water. oceans, oceans. Seas, seas, and rivers, and rivers. all natural. Animals, Animals. pig, pig. Fish. fish, chicken, chicken. chicken. Cow. cow, trees and plants, but also flowers, flowers. and soil. Flowers. And then minerals, such as rocks, Gold, diamond, and silver. And finally, what we need most of all, every moment of our lives, even when we're asleep, is we need the air to breathe. So this was a good recap of our previous lesson of natural resources. Guys, that was excellent. Very well done. And in today's lesson, we're going to go back to a subject that we've already learnt about a few lessons ago. Maps and photographs. But what we're going to do today is we're going to explore how maps and photographs can help us with geography. Now what geography means is getting to know a place. And what we're going to learn today is how by looking at a map or by even looking at a photograph, it can tell us about the place, such as the weather, the natural resources it has, the different types of landscape, or even the places that we might want to visit. So what we've got now is a PowerPoint presentation for our students to observe, listen to, and also practice speaking about how maps and photographs can help us to study geography. And remember, guys, geography is the study of a place. So let's turn to look at the TV screen, please, guys. So let's take a look at our PowerPoint presentation today using maps and photographs for the study of geography. So remember, guys, geography is the study of places, what every place has. The type of weather, natural resources, landscape, and other things such as places to visit. And in the picture here, we can see two images. The one on the left, is this a map or a photograph? Yes, you can see here we have a map. Can anyone guess what continent? What place in the world? Yes, this is a map of America. Here is the west coast and here in the middle you can see the landmass. The landmass is the land in the middle. And then to the left of the land is the ocean. The blue area is the sea. And then on the other side is the other ocean. Here on the east coast of America, New York. And here on the west coast, San Francisco with the Pacific Ocean. And what type of image do we have here? A map or a photograph? Photograph. photograph. Well, we can still see from the photograph. What can you see? Ocean. ocean. Yeah. So you can see that this place has ocean too. By looking at a map and looking at a photo, we can still tell what each place has. Maps and photographs can help us to study the places where we live. Yeah. All we need to do is just examine the images, and the images tell us the different things about them. The first thing that can tell us, general characteristics. 
Now, here is a map of what country is it a map of? Thailand. Yes, you can see. The first thing a map will tell us is the place. And Thailand is the area in yellow. So all of the yellow areas are the areas of Thailand. What city do we live in? Chiang Rai. Chiang Rai. So where is Chiang Rai? Is Chiang Rai at the bottom? Is Chiang Rai at the top? Yes. Here we are, here. We're at the very top of Thailand. Chiang Rai. So by looking at the map, we can see that we're near Lao, Burma, and even China. So one thing a map tells us is where we are and where the closest places are, the borders of other countries. And here we have a scale that tells us the area, the size of each place. Maps can tell us the approximate area of places in kilometers and the borders that they share. Now this is a bigger map, not just of Thailand, this is a map of the world. This time Thailand is a smaller place here. And you can see the bigger areas like China and Russia. On the map, if you wanted to know how big each place is, you can use the scale here. We have a scale zero to 500. So from here to here is 500 kilometers. So we could take a ruler and get that measurement and then use it to measure the other places. So from here to here on the map is 500 kilometers. So it tells us how big each place is. Next, landscape. Okay. Now, how many different colours can you see here? Around five or six. Does anybody know what the different colours represent? Not countries, the height of the places. So you see here, we have a scale. Green is zero to 200 metres. But then... As we go higher, the colours change. So we go from green to yellow, orange, purple and white. So we can see here that here are the mountains. Because purple and white means over 1,000 metres. Photographs can tell us about the physical landscape of places like hills and rivers so what can we see in this picture guys can we see any trees yes flowers grass can we see hills yes you can see in the background there we can see some hills too so it tells us what the place is like can we see any rivers no so we know that this place has lots of green trees. And the third thing, climate. Now, climate is another word for weather. Okay? The different climate of each place tells us what the weather's like. You can see here, tropical, temperate, continental, popular, eh, sorry, polar, hot, cold. Okay, so you can see by looking at the different colours, what area of the world. So we are here. This is Thailand. What colour is Thailand? Blue. So we can see Thailand is tropical. We live in a tropical climate. But if I go back to where I am from, England, what colour is England? Green. Green is temperate. And then, if we go to the top of the world, where all the snow and ice is, polar. polar. So just by looking at this map, we can see the climate of different countries. Photographs can tell us about the weather and different seasons that a place has. 
So in this photograph here, does it look hot or cold? Cold. What can you see? Ice. So where do you think this is? Do you think this is in Thailand? No. No. This is in the North Pole because you can see all the ice and the snow. Natural resources. So this is what we studied last lesson. Natural resources are the things we can see naturally, such as water, trees, and soil. They are three examples of natural resources in this picture. Maps can tell us about a place's different natural resources, like water, and fish. Now this is a map of the United States and look at all the different symbols. It tells us where all the different natural resources are. For example, this one here is gold. So if we wanted to go looking for gold, we could go to California, Nevada or Utah. Here is oil. So look at all the symbols for oil. And then in the sea, what can you see pictures of? Fish. So the pictures of fish tell us where to go to find each different natural resource. And finally, general, general. Information. information. Yes. When we go on holiday, we want to know what places we can visit. Like if I was to go on holiday to Japan, if I want to go to Tokyo, I want to think, okay, what's in Tokyo? If I visit Tokyo, what can I see? Photographs can tell us other information about places, such as tourist destinations. Like if we go to Bangkok, we might want to visit the temples in Bangkok or Dream World or restaurants. Maps can tell us about them types of places too. Any questions, guys? That was excellent. Very well done. Welcome back to class. We hope your students enjoyed the PowerPoint presentation so that they can begin to understand the ways in which Maps and photographs can tell us about the different places that we see and we can extract different types of information which can help us study geography. And coming up, we've got a flashcards exercise for our students to practice forming sentences together. But before then, guys, time for our stretch sequence. So let's stand up and push in our chairs. And for this sequence, we can begin by doing rotations. Left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right. Excellent, guys. And now we can do five stretches to our right. One, two, three. Four, five, very good guys. And now we can do five stretches to our left. One, two, three, four, five. Brilliant. Now shake it out. Arms and legs, shake it out. Shake it up. Excellent. And we can take our right hand and find our left foot. Left hand, right foot. Right hand, left foot. Left hand, Right foot. Right hand. Left foot. 
left hand, right foot. Excellent, guys. And another shake, arms and legs. Shake it out. And to finish, we will do five star jumps. One, two, three, four, five. Excellent, guys. Have a seat. So what we've got now is a flashcards exercise for our students to practice forming sentences of. Ready, guys? Using maps and photographs to study geography. So teachers, you need to print off two sets of flashcards. The first set, we're going to have our students practice speaking and we'll place along the board. The second set, put all the words of the sentences into different cards and then put our students into teams and they can practice forming and speaking the sentences together. So first of all, guys, let's have a look at the sentences. Photographs can tell us about the landscape of places like hills and rivers. Yes, by looking at a photograph, we know what type of things a place has. And that's called the landscape. The next one, photographs can tell us about the weather and different seasons that a place has. Remember the picture or the photograph in the PowerPoint of the ice and the snow. We know that that place is very cold. And then our next, we have maps. Tell us about a place's natural resources. Like water and minerals. Yes, similar to landscape. A map or a photograph can tell us what type of things a place has. Looking at rivers, it has water. Looking at trees, it has vegetation. Sentence number four. Photographs tell us information about places, such as tourist destinations. Yes, by looking at a map or a photograph, we might see some interesting places, like museums, temples, or amusement parks that we want to visit if we go there. And our final sentence, we have maps can tell us the approximate area of places and the borders that they share. Like the map of Thailand we seen earlier, we could see where Chiang Rai was on the map, where we were close to Laos, Burma and China. And a map can also tell us how big a place is looking at a scale. So there are five sentences, guys. What we're going to do now is put our students into teams. So Bangkok and Lakau, team one. Preu and Down, team two. Chu, Nadia, team three. Pat, Pakbung and Net, team four. And what we're going to do is give each team a sentence that are mixed up into individual words. Our students have to work together to form the sentence using the examples on the board. Then at the end, guys, practice speaking together. So now for the flashcards. So team one, here's your flashcards. But not yet. Team two, here's yours. You're welcome. But not yet, just wait for everyone to get ready. Team three, here's your flashcards. You're welcome. And team four, Okay, guys, so we've all got our flashcards. Team one, ready? ready. Team two? Ready. Team three? Ready. Team four? Okay, so all of your sentences are on the board. Find out which one and put them together. Then when you're ready, let me know and we'll practice speaking together. Three, two, one, go. So maps, photographs is the first word, but which one?
Wow. Excellent. Photographs tell us information about places such as tourist destinations. Excellent, guys. Maps tell us about our places, natural resource, like water and minerals. Brilliant, guys. Well done. Photographs can tell us about the weather and different seasons at a place has. Brilliant, guys. Very well spoken. And team three, photographs can tell us about the landscape of places like hills and rivers. Excellent, Nadia. Very well done. So, guys, what you can do now, collect your cards and pass them to the team to your left, and we'll get ready for the next round. So, teachers, you can see the activity that we're doing in our classroom now. You can pause the video and do the same activity with your own students for the next 10 minutes or so. And remember, after each round, have the students practice speaking and then swap the flashcards. So, Pak Bung, I can take your ones and pass them to Bang Bun and Lak Gao. So, everyone pass their flashcards on, guys. Team three ready? Team two ready? ready. Team four ready? ready? Team one ready? ready? Oh. So different sentence this time, but the first word is always maps or photographs. Well done, Ned. Photographs tell us information about places such as tourist destinations. Brilliant, guys. Photographs can tell us about the landscape of places like hills and rivers. Excellent, guys. Very well done. Photographs can tell us about the weather and different seasons that a place has. Brilliant, guys. Well done. And team three, maps tell us about our places natural resource like water and minerals excellent nadia very well done so once again guys now you can send the flashcards to your left again for the next round so pak bung i will take yours okay team four ready team three ready team three ready team two ready team one go Well done, guys. Great to see you working together. Photographs can tell us about the landscape of places like hills and rivers. Brilliant, guys. Photographs tell us information about places such as tourists destinations, the places we want to visit. Photographs can tell us about the weather and different seasons that a place has. Brilliant, guys. Well spoken. 
maps, maps. tell us, tell us about, about our places, our places. Natural, resources. natural resources, like water, water. And, minerals. and minerals. Brilliant, guys. Very well spoken. Okay, guys, doing really well. Now it's time for our final round. So let's pass them around one more time. Thank you. Thank you, guys. They'll go to team one. Team one there for you. Team one ready? Team two ready? Team three ready? No. <laughs> team three ready? Team four ready? ready? Excellent, guys. Three, two, one, go. <laughs> Okay, can I head down first? So, photographs can tell us about the landscape of places like hills and rivers. Brilliant, guys. Very well done. Maps tell us about our places, natural resources like water and minerals. Brilliant, guys. Team four. Photographs tell us information about places such as tourist destinations. Brilliant, guys. Very well done. Nadia and Chu. Photographs can tell us about the weather and different seasons that a place has. Excellent. Okay. Very well done. Guys, that was brilliant. Give yourselves all a big round of applause. Very well done. <laughs> now it's time for our worksheet part of the lesson. So teachers, make sure every student in your class gets their own worksheet. And what we want our students to do is learn how to use the map to answer the different questions. What we've got is a map of the world with the different continents and the different oceans. And students have six questions to answer that they need to do by reading the map to tell where the places are in relation to each other. What we've got here, guys, is a scale. And the scale tells us north, east, west, and south. So by using the scale, we will be able to tell where each ocean or continent is in relation to each other. So give our students around 12 minutes for this activity and just help them with anything they need. So Ned, this one's for you. Thank you, Victoria. You're welcome. Pat, for you. Thank you, Victoria. You're welcome. Nadia, for you. Thank you. You're welcome. Chu, here's yours. You're welcome. Dan, for you. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Prel, for you. Thank you, Chu. You're welcome. Lakau, for you. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Yuna. You're welcome. Bang one. So names on top first, guys. So the first thing we have, we have our scale. Our scale looks like this. N stands for north. E stands for east. S stands for south. And finally, W stands for west. So these are the different directions on the map. The first question asks, guys, what continent do we live in? Not country, we're in Thailand, but what continent is Thailand in? Asia. Asia, correct. Asia. So the answer for one, we are in the continent Asia. And then, question number two. Order. America. Now what border means, remember the PowerPoint exercise, border means next to. So find South America on the map and have a look at what to Pacific Ocean. 
So we've got Pacific and what's the second one for now? Atlantic. Oceans. Excellent. You see, by reading the map and using the keys, we can answer the different questions. And question number three asks us, what ocean is north of Europe? So find Europe, and then we have to go above Europe, because north is above. So number three, find Europe on the map, and then what ocean is above Europe, north of Europe? Have a look. Let's see if we can find Europe now. Here is Europe. So then we go above Europe. We find the Arctic. Yes, Arctic is the North Pole. So the ocean that is above Europe because it's to the north. Arctic Ocean. Arctic. Arctic is another word for the North Pole. And the Antarctic at the bottom is the South Pole. How about question number four? What ocean is east of Africa? So where's Africa on the map? And then can we find what's to the right of Africa? Because east is to the right. So find Africa on the map, the continent. Africa, and then what ocean is to the right? Give you a clue, it's near India. Between Africa and India is the Indian Ocean. Indian. India is the continent, so the ocean, Indian Ocean. So get used to using the directions. North is above, east is to the right, south is below, and west is to the left. By using the kick. <laughs> What's number five? Ocean Separates North America and Europe from. from Europe. Okay, so separates means in between. So what do we need? We need to find North America here Atlantic. and Europe. And Prow is correct. What ocean separates North America and Europe? Atlantic Ocean. Where I live, or where I am from, Liverpool, is right next to the Atlantic Ocean. If I keep going, the next place I will see after Ireland is America. Atlantic Ocean separates Europe. Okay, welcome back to class. We hope your students enjoyed the worksheet activity where they can use the map to find out the various items of geography around the world. By using the key and the different places, we can find the different answers to the questions, such as, what is the name of the continent where you live? Asia. Which two oceans border South America? Pacific and Atlantic Oceans. Which ocean is north of Europe? Arctic Ocean. Which ocean is east of Africa? Indian Ocean, yes. Which ocean separates North America from Europe? 
Atlantic Ocean. And finally, which continent is closest to Antarctica? South America. So you see, by using the key and the different locations on the map, we can answer the questions. And this is how we use maps and photographs to study geography. Guys, that was brilliant. Very well done. And that's all we've got time for today. So we'll see you again soon for the next lesson. Can we turn to wave and say goodbye, guys? Bye-bye. See you again soon.